Welcome back to my crochet channel. Today's video, we're going to be doing our stitch of the month. Now it has some other names like double front post or alternating front post, but the Alpine stitch is done a little bit different. And so we're going to be learning how to do that today. So what is the stitch of the month? For the year of 2021, each month we're learning a new stitch. And we're going to be making a swatch, and then we're going to make a practice project to practice the stitch that we learned. Now this is not a very big washcloth, it only measures about 8 by 8 and it has this fun little single crochet ruffle edge. But don't worry, if you want your washcloth bigger, when we get to that portion, I'll explain to you how to do the multiples and rows to make your washcloth a little bit bigger. But for our practice project, we're going to be making an 8 by 8 inch washcloth. It's a wonderful stitch for a washcloth because it has those textures. And you can use it as a dishcloth, as a cleaning cloth, or just a fancy little washcloth to have in your bathroom, and it works great on your face. Now you can find the crochet pattern and the information about the stitch of the month on my blog, and as always, I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. What you're going to need is two different color cottons. Now this stitch can be made in one color, two color, three color, but we're using two different colors just to make it easier for stitch placement. And I kind of like the two color washcloths. These are all cotton yarns. This uh, cream color is I love this cotton. This bright pink is I love this cotton. And then I have the lemon yellow and the lavender, and that's what we're going to do our demonstration with today. And these are premier cotton yarns. Um, these are the dollar store ones that were only a dollar a piece and it's a great way to use those inexpensive cotton yarns and make some fun washcloths. You're going to need about an ounce, maybe an ounce and a half of each of your colors. So with two skeins you can make two washcloths. We're going to use our eye hook today which is a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need your needle just for weaving in ends and a pair of scissors. Let's get started. We're going to begin with our slip knot. We're going to chain 23 chains and you need to remember to chain this beginning chain just a little bit loose because you don't want one end of your washcloth all puckered up. So we're going to chain 23 chains. I have chained my 23 chains and by using this amount of stitches this is going to give me about an 8 by 8 inch washcloth and that also includes the trim around the edge. If you want your washcloth to be wider you can add more chains and what you'll do is you'll add chains in increments of two and then when you reach that amount you'll add three chains. Alright, and then if you want to make the washcloth longer, you'll need to add in increments of two rows. But we'll talk more about that when we get a little farther on. So I've made my 23 chains, or stitched my 23 chains, and now I'm going to stitch a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. One, two, three, four. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over and go through the second two loops. And what we're going to do for row one is just stitch one double crochet 
in each of the chains across. One double crochet in each chain across. I stitched one double crochet in each chain across. I began in the fourth chain from the hook. So we need to count that chain three as our first and you'll have 21 double crochets. And instead of chaining three, we're just going to chain one and turn our work. And for row two, we're going to stitch one single crochet in each stitch across. Our chain one does not count as a stitch, so we'll go right in that first double crochet and stitch a single crochet. And we'll stitch one single crochet in each of the double crochets all the way across our row. I stitched one single crochet in each of my double crochets across, so I have 21 single crochets. And each row of your work will have the same number of stitches, 21 stitches. All right, I'm going to bring in my second color. There we go. Snug that down and chain three. One, two, three. I'm not going to cut off my color one. I'm going to trail it up the side. All right, so we chain three with our new color and we're going to turn our row. Now, if it's clumsy for you or you're just uncomfortable with leaving that attached, you can cut that. You're just gonna have to have a whole lot of weaving in at the end of the project. And when we put our trim on, we'll stitch over those trails of yarn and you won't even see them. All right, so our chain three counts is our first stitch. Our next stitch is going to be a front post double crochet. And we'll be stitching those around the front posts of the double crochets from row one. So yarn over, go around that post of the next stitch and stitch your double crochet. We're still stitching a double crochet. We're just placing it in a different place. The next stitch, one, two, three, is going to be a double crochet in the next stitch. Then we'll skip down here and stitch our front post double crochet down there. And what we're doing for row three is we're alternating a double crochet and a front post double crochet. So our first chain three counted as our first double crochet. Then we front post double crocheted in the front post from row one. Then we double crocheted in the next single crochet. Front post double crochet in the front post double crochet in the single crochet, and we're alternating this all the way across. Double crochet, front post, double crochet. Double crochet, front post, double crochet. And this is why I wanted to do it in a different color because now you can see where those stitches are going. All right. One thing to be careful of is when you're doing this, you can get off. And the way you can check to make sure you're not off is to make sure you just have that one stitch in the back that you didn't stitch in. All right. Because that's where you placed your front post in row one double crochets. All right, and so we'll just continue this across. I continued this across, alternating front post and double crochet, and this leaves me with my last double crochet and my last single crochet. And 
chain one. And see how that works? And you're going to have 21 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. All right, let's work row four. We stitched our double crochet and we're going to chain one and turn. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch across. Our chain one does not count as a stitch, so we'll go right in that first stitch and then we'll stitch one single crochet in each of those stitches across. I stitched one single crochet in each of those stitches across and before we do the next row I want you to see the other side. If I turn it over this is how the front looks and this is how the back looks. All your, your front bow stitches will always be on the front of your work. Alright, so now we're going to switch back to our first color. I'm just going to trail it up the side, snug that down, and chain three, and turn my work. Now, for row five, we want to alternate our front posts in between the front posts. And we're going to be stitching them in the front post from this row, or from the double crochets in this row. We won't be stitching them in the single crochet. And that's what gives the Alpine stitch a nice thick stitch that works great for lots of projects. All right, so here's our first uh, double crochet because our chain three counts as our first. Now we're going to stitch a double crochet in the next. Now we're going to stitch our front post double crochet around the double crochet from that row of double crochets. Okay. Now we'll stitch a double crochet in the next. We'll stitch a front post, double crochet around the front post of the double crochet from the previous row. Then double crochet in the next. Double crochet around the front post from the previous row. Well, let's take a look at it real quick. See how that's working? We have two double crochets at the beginning because we have our chain three. And this double crochet is stitched in the single crochet above this, this front post double crochet. Then we stitch a front post double crochet around the double crochet from the previous row. And then we'll alternate double crochet front post like we did down here. All right, so double crochet in the next stitch and front post double crochet around that double crochet from the previous row. And just to be clear, we're never going to stitch our front post double crochets around our single crochet row. All right, just to make sure you understand that, we double crochet in the next single crochet and then front post double crochet around that front post from the previous row. And one thing to make sure is that your front posts are alternating, not on the front post that we did here. Okay, because that's what gives the Alpine stitch its neat look. All right, and we'll just continue this across till we reach the end of this row. Double crochet in the single crochet, front post double crochet in the double crochet from the previous double crochet row. So I have repeated across, double crochet in the single crochet, double crochet front post around the double crochet from the previous row. And when we get to the end, we have two stitches and we're going to stitch a double crochet in those last two stitches.
and chain one. And let's go over it again just to make sure you understand what we did. Okay, our chain three counted as a double crochet and then we double crocheted in the next. We front post double crocheted around the double crochet and then double crochet in the single crochet and your front post double crochets are in between the front post double crochets we did on that other row. And that way it alternates and makes a nice thick project. I'm going to turn it over so you can see the back. Here's the back again. All your front post stitches are on the front and the back just looks like this. It's pretty and I like the back as well. All right, and that's the way that row five should look. After row five, we chained one and turn. And now we're just going to repeat what we've done on our previous single crochet rows. Our chain one does not count as a stitch, and then we single crochet in each of the stitches across. one single crochet in each stitch across. I have completed row six, which is one single crochet in each stitch across. This is how the front looks. Again, this is how your back looks. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue to repeat row three, row four, row five, and row six for 14 more rows and you'll alternate your colors every two rows. This will help you keep track of where to place your stitches and also make it so that you can see them a little more clearly. And by practicing this for 14 more rows, we're going to make a nice size washcloth. All right, so for row seven, You'll stitch a chain three in your second color. I put that little chain one in there to keep my loop from coming out. So we'll put our new color in, which is our color two. We'll make our chain three. Our chain three will count as our first double crochet. Get my hook back in there. There we go. And then we'll front post double crochet around the next double crochet or next stitch. Then double crochet in the next. And by doing it with two colors, when you stitch this color up here, it will look just like the one down here. And then when you change back to your second color after your next two rows, it'll look exactly like this one. And that's why I suggest that you use two colors of yarn to help you keep track of your rows and your stitches. All right, so we're going to repeat row three, row four, row five, and row six for 14 more rows, alternating our colors every two rows. I've only done four more rows, but I wanted to show you again how it looks how this row, these two rows here, look exactly like these two rows here. And these two rows here look exactly like the two rows here. And um, just wanted to show you that so that you would understand how the pattern looks. And again, here's the back. And here's the front. And of course, I have 10 more rows to do since I've only done four more. But I wanted to show you that also, I wanted you to remember to carry your yarn up the side. When we complete our total rows, we're going to do a single crochet row around and then a fun trim row. So don't worry about those trailing up yarns on the side. And also, if you're changing colors every two rows, they're always going to be on one side. So I have completed those additional rows and that should bring you up to row 20. 
Here's a neat way or easy way to count your rows. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Because each color change is two rows. And this is how it should look at row 20. All right, now on the other uh, lavender and yellow one that I did, I did the trim in yellow. But I think I want to do the trim in the purple this time, or the lavender. So I'm going to leave that attached. For row 21, we're going to go with our color 1 for this last row. So I'm chaining 3, and I'm just going to stitch 1 double crochet in each of those single crochets across. This way, the top of our washcloth looks similar to the bottom of our washcloth where we started with one row of our color one with a row of double crochets. I stitched one double crochet and each single crochet across and I'm going to cut off my color one. Tie that off and of course I'll weave that in later because I have other ends to weave in as well. All right, so now we're going to use our lavender as our trim. If you're going to use your last color as your trim, you can just go ahead and start over here. But since I'm bringing my lavender back in, I'm going to go into the top of that chain three and chain one. And what we're going to do is we're going to begin by evenly stitching a row of single crochets all the way around all four sides of our washcloth. Now, of course, the top of this is easy because we're just stitching in those double crochet rows that we just, or those double crochet stitches that we just stitched. A single crochet in each stitch across the top. Now I want to evenly work down the side of my washcloth. So I want to put two more single crochets in the corner so it eases around nicely and then we're just going to begin stitching single crochets evenly and what that means is you're going to try to stitch in the stitches and not the holes of the sides of the stitches there is not a set amount of stitches that you need you just want to make it look even and neat. Be careful not to make them too close so they bunch up, but don't make them too far apart either so that you have gapes or gaps, <laughs> not gapes, <laughs> in between your stitches. You just want to make it look nice and pretty. Now there might be a spot where you want to put a stitch in one of the holes between, and that's okay too. You just have to look at it and see what works. Making your stitches nice and even, and you'll work all the way down. You'll put three stitches in the corner, then we'll stitch across, three stitches in the corner, and then up the other side. I have stitched all the way around, stitching single crochets evenly, three single crochets in each of the corners. And I wanted to show you on the side when you're stitching over those trailed up yarn, you're going to do it exactly the same. Just making sure you put your single crochet stitches over those trails of yarn so that it covers and not be able to see it on your washcloth. It just makes it nice and neat as you work along. So I've stitched all the way around and up this side, I'm going to place two more single crochets in this corner where I placed that first one. I'm going to join to that first single crochet with a slip stitch and chain one. All right, now the fun little trim, it's really super simple and it works great on this project. So we chained one, 
we're going to skip the next single crochet and single crochet in the next. We're going to chain one and now we're going to cross back and single crochet in that single crochet that we skipped. Chain one. We'll skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next, and chain one. And then we'll cross back going from front to back and single crochet in that skipped stitch and chain one. We chained one, we're going to skip the next, single crochet in the next, chain one, cross back and single crochet in that skipped single crochet stitch. Chain one, skip the next, single crochet in the next, chain one, cross back and skip in the and stitch in the skipped stitch. Chain one, skip, single crochet in the next, chain one, cross back, and single crochet in the skipped stitch. And that's the way the trim works. And see how it kind of looks like it flows? It's really a pretty and simple stitch, and it adds a great touch to this washcloth, all right? And you'll just do this working all the way around the washcloth till you get back up over here, and then we'll join to that first single crochet. All right, so chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next, chain one and cross back, and single crochet in that skipped stitch. It looks like a wave to me. And when I see a wave, I think of water. And this is a washcloth, so I thought it fit perfectly. All right, I'm just going to keep going all the way around my washcloth. I have stitched my trim all the way around. Here's my last stitch. And I'm just going to join over here to that first single crochet with a slip stitch and cut my yarn. There we go. And then I'll just pull it in to the back so I can weave that in. Well, I'm going to try to do that. <laughs> there we go. And of course, I'll need to tidy that up a little bit. So here are the three that I made. I made these two previously, and then we made this one today. And something that I want to mention is if your washcloths are not squaring up, you can always put them on a blocking board, spritz them with a little water, and then let them dry if you want them to be nice and square. Let me answer a couple of questions real quick that I know I'm going to get. You do not have to use cotton yarn to stitch up the Alpine stitch. We chose to use a cotton yarn because we were making a washcloth. If you're going to make a hot pad or a washcloth, cotton works great. But you can use this stitch in any weight yarn with any crochet hook. You can use it on a hat, a scarf, a blanket, a baby blanket, anything that you want you can use this particular stitch. It makes a nice thick stitch, so it's perfect for lots of winter items, like a blanket, like I mentioned already. So go ahead and try it out with any yarn and any crochet hook. Mm -hmm.